Now we're going to be doing contour comparison or profile form. So I've done this little V groove here and I've exported a contour into the machine already. You can do this from a DXF or DWG file, um, export it as a CSV value and then it will have a table of uh, results that we can then compare with our contour. So I'm going to load the part into the machine and now I'm going to be going into the test plan contour select profile form you can see here that flatness is an option and it's only an option because we're on t3d which also does flatness um, usually that isn't available but profile form and then we've got some options of different profile forms we're going to be looking at two in this case general and the tolerance profile so i'll start with the tolerance profile that's the one i think more people use got my axis and I'm going to use the Checkmaster V Groove profile. And I'm just going to drag my window into that V Groove. Now, all I want to do is make sure that I'm getting most of that groove there. So that looks good to me. So I'll finish that. And now, if I go into live mode, oh, I can't do live mode because I've got a uh, touch probe feature on there. Let's delete that. Okay, so if I go into live mode, we can do the form of the part in this area. And what that's going to do is just compare a contour for us. So you can see that it's given us a zero value here. Now, the zero just means that it's passed and it's passed while being completely inside the contour that we've given it. So we've got these two bands, the red lines here, and then the contour down the middle, and you can see it's well within the shape that we've given it to adhere to. So that's why we've got a zero value. Next, I'm going to go into profile form and choose general. And the difference between the tolerance profile and general is general will tell us the deviation, no matter how small, from the nominal, while the tolerance profile doesn't have a nominal. It just has two bands to stay within. So now I'm choosing Checkmaster V Groove. Um, press Finish there. And it will start measuring that. And you can see, because it's already taken the contour, it's done that immediately for us. So you can see it's got the original contour and it's got the measured values here. And we can then look at the form deviation to show how much it deviates from the nominal line. And you can see it's just a little bit above. It dips down a bit there. But in general, very good. And you can see a bit of more magnification there, maybe some lumps and bumps and a little valley there. So that will give us a value of how much that deviates in total. Um, so that's basically how a contour comparison works. Okay, now we're going to be looking at the differences between roundness, concentricity, and runout. So firstly, roundness. What is roundness? It's just how circular the part is or how round it is. Uh, like the name suggests. Secondly, concentricity is how close the center of the shape we're measuring is to the center line of the part. So if you can imagine you've constructed your axis at the start and done all your alignments, then you measure a shape. Now it doesn't actually have to be a round shape, it can be any shape you like, and it will find the center of that profile and then draw the distance from the center to the center line of the axis, and that's the concentricity. Thirdly, Run out is kind of a combination of the two. So it uses the deviations in shape, but also the deviation from the center of the part. And it combines the two to make a worst case. So, I mean, it technically doesn't need either of them. All it is is the highest point all the way around the profile from the center of the axis to the lowest point around the profile from the center of the axis. And the difference in height of those two is the run out. So I'll show you practically what that means. So I'm going to load the part in the into the machine. And first I'm going to choose roundness. I'm going to click general here. 
and I'm just going to put it on the apex of that rad. And then I'm going to stick it in live mode, so click live. And you can see the roundness can't use an axis to tie itself to anything because it doesn't use an axis, it doesn't matter where the center line of the part is for the, run for the roundness to be measured. So that, run at, that roundness has been measured at 0.7 of a micron, that's really good. And no matter where that is, it will just measure the roundness. So I'm going to move it onto the cam here, and this cam I know is eccentric in the part. <coughs> so it may not be as round, but it's definitely not the 6 mil eccentricity that I know this to be. So we're just measuring the roundness and the concentricity and run out have nothing to do with it. Okay, secondly, I'm going to be measuring the concentricity. So if I put concentricity on the part, click concentricity, and then just click on the part where I want it to be. This time I do have to choose an axis because it's going to measure the distance from the center of the trace to the axis. And then press finish. So we've got the concentricity measured here. And you can see, oh, it's all also 0.7 of a micron concentric. But this takes no account of the shape of the part. This is only looking at the center point of this shape and the distance from the center. So if I move that concentricity onto the eccentric, while the roundness gave us a very small value, concentricity will give us quite a high value, 6 mil. OK, and thirdly, Radial runout. So I'm going to choose radial runout here. Click general and then choose maybe a radial runout here. It does it again use the axis because it measures the highest and lowest points away from that center point of the axis. Press finish there. So this runout is simply put the highest minus the lowest values. If I zoom in on this contour, you can see that we've got the undulations of the turning here. Uh, this is a standard shape for turn parts. And you can see the highest point here and the lowest point here. And the center of these two circles is the axis. Uh, so it's the minimum material from the maximum material gives us that value. And if I move that onto a concentric, you'll see how it exaggerates that. You can see that it's drawn the smaller circle and the larger circle to get the total value for the run out there. Okay, now I'm going to be looking at interrupted surfaces. So I've loaded into the machine a turbo, and this has multiple blades where we're looking at the profile form around the outside contour of those blades. So we could do this with a profile form measurement. I'm just going to use a diameter just to show the general principle. So on the screen here, I've got the scan of the part with a reference position. All I'm going to do is click diameter and then general and then draw a box over that diameter there. And obviously for a profile form, I drag it over the entire part and then check against the CSV that I've loaded in, just like we saw in the profile form video. So now I'm going to reference my part axis. Um, and what I'm going to do is set that to measurement mode here, which I've clicked on, and I'm going to set that to interrupted. It used to be static, and the interruptions are, um, are regular, but I don't need to click that. Number of tracks is five, and if, you, if I zoom in here, we can see that there are five tracks, one at either end, and then three in the middle of this window. And this is going to create five points to join up. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to rotate the entire part, and I'm going to show you that now in live mode, so you can see the part spinning up. So it's going to rotate the part and then pick the highest point as it goes around to get the interrupted surface. So every peak will all join up and then we'll create a diameter out of those peaks. So we'll get five points on the screen. So if I go to detail contour, we can see all those five points. And the more tracks I put on, obviously the more rotations there are, but then the higher resolution I'll get from that. And this can be done with other things. Um, for example, I could do this rad, or I could do a profile form uh, if I had that of the part. So I do a radius general. 
set the path axis, set it to interrupted, and then press finish there. And it's going to do five more traces, and these five will join up to form a radius. Okay, and the detail contour shows that it's joined them up, and it's given me that radius, and it's of the maximum material of the entire surface of the part. So it's taken that 3D surface and turned it into a 2D representation of the surface of the part so that we can check that it clears a housing that we're about to load the turbo into.